In this lesson, we will be discussing a type of question in the data insight section that is now actually being combined with graphics interpretation as kind of a integrated category within the data insights, and that's table analysis questions. So logistically, there aren't probably going to be two to three table analysis questions. At this point, there are likely to be somewhere around four table analysis and graphics interpretation questions, but there could still be three. So we say two to three, but it's more likely to be one to two. But again, it can be anywhere in there. And you basically want to assume that you're not going to see that many table analysis. But when you do that, they're probably the kind of questions that you want to be able to get right. So we're still going to assume two to three, though it may be closer to one to two based on the structure, understanding that this is an adaptive section after all. So you're going to have a single slide containing a sortable table to interpret for every table analysis question. You're going to have two to three questions per slide, and you have to, of course, get each of those questions correct for credit on that slide. Now, strategically, these questions should be one of the fastest paces. So we're looking at a fewer than two minutes per slide average. You're going to have a hard three minute maximum for any table analysis slide. And honestly, if you are getting close to three minutes, you probably missed something in your analysis of the table. And you're going to want to interpret that table before engaging the question tasks to understand the basics of it to be most efficient. You'll also want to consider setting an initial sort to gain an understanding of the categories of the information contained within the, the table. And you'll, of course, want to use the provided interface calculator for any clumsy or complex arithmetic that may be uh, required by the table analysis slide in front of you. So we've got a sample info table here on the left hand side of the screen. And so you want to note your categories, your titles, your metrics and any broad trends to start. So we can see we've got some insects and then we've got some total acres. We've got natural national forests, native, other federal and state and private as some categories. And we read at the beginning, we see that the table below shows all activity detected during aerial surveys in Alaska in 2019 by land ownership and insects. So we've got the insects, we've got the total acres, and it apparently shows that the national forest, native, other federal and state and private are the categories of ownership. We did skim the text and we probably needed to here to understand that it's by land ownership. Otherwise, we're probably wondering what the National Forest, Native, Other, Federal and State and Private means. So make sure that you don't completely ignore the accompanying text. Do recognize, however, that the default sort for these tables is often alphabetical and that's pretty useless because they're not going to ask as a question, which of the insects is 10th in alphabetical order? It's just not going to happen. So. That means we want to look for a more useful sort based on our initial investigation. So how do we sort the table? We want to synthesize the information from the table and the text to determine a possible initial sort. And we can see the relationship between the categories. So it's all about the number of acres here in this table. And we've got the insects that are apparently detected within some acreage in these different types of land. You can sort in both ascending and descending order in many of the tables. It's not guaranteed that you can, but often you will be able to. And you can see here, we've now sorted by total acres, and that's going to be fewest to most, but we can also sort from greatest to least. And it's completely at your discretion which you prefer. I tend to think the greatest to least is better, but it really depends on what the question ends up asking. And you just need to make sure that you've got a sort that's more useful than alphabetical. So now let's take a look at some sample questions and we're going to select yes. If the following statement about Alaska insect infestation is supported by information in the table, otherwise we're going to select no. So we start with the first statement about the hemlock sawfly being the insect most likely to be found in the national forest. So we can logically estimate to determine that only the hemlock sawfly and spruce aphid have large percentages in the national forest because we could see we've got national forest out of total acres we've got national forest out of total acres for the infestation so then we can just use the calculator to process the clumsy values of 322,895 divided by 381,034 and 509 divided by 976 to confirm that yes 84.7 percent is greater than 52.2 percent and we would select yes for the first statement. Then. 
we've got to consider the second statement. The insect most common to native land is also most common to state and private land. So we want to efficiently sort the table, and you really do want to sort and resort the table to expedite your evaluation here. Don't forget that the sorting function uh, exists. That's certainly a kind of basic mistake that a lot of folks don't realize that you can sort these tables when they're standalone. Definitely engage with the sort. And if we efficiently sort about the facts regarding native and private land, well, we've now sorted by the most for native land, and we can sort for the most by private land. And we see that we actually change the 25,664 that was the top of the native is not the top when we sort by state and private. So we see that the birch leaf miner is most common to the state and private land, whereas the aspen leaf miner is most common to the native land. So the second statement is a no. It is not supported by the information in the table. And then we have one more statement about beetles combining to account for less than half of all infested acres. So we have to carefully note the details about beetles and use all of our known facts to minimize computation and calculation. So we've got three different types of beetle, and we can see that we're basically going to add up to around 140,000 of our acres. And that 140,000 is going to be out of the total of 381,000, and I don't even necessarily have to put that back into the calculator to see that 140 out of 381 is less than half. So that means that statement three is a yes to match the uh, statement as presented that beetles combined account for less than half of all infested acres. So our process for table analysis questions. First, proactively engage the table, no noting all of the aspects that are presented and set that useful default sort. That's probably the most important procedural aspect of the entire problem. Force yourself to engage. Then you want to note the specifically sought value for each task. There are different types of questions they can ask, and you just have to make sure that you're answering whatever they're seeking the answer to. And you want to, again, beware of mistaking the details. The details matter here, and they will definitely use some trap answers that, you know, utilize kind of cheap tricks if you're not careful. Step three, you want to get your necessary info, sorting the columns to help expedite that evaluation. Again, if you use the sort, you can make the evaluation go faster. So make sure that you're not avoiding the sort. It is the best way to engage with a table analysis problem. And then you'll want to confirm your answer using the interface calculator to guarantee accuracy and double check your question and selections to make sure that there were no simple mistakes made in the processing. These questions should be some of, if not the easiest question type on the data insights section. So really be careful. Don't slow down too much, but double check things to make sure you're not walking into those traps that are legion in these question types in particular. So go ahead and practice some table analysis question drills on your own to improve at what is one of the foundational skills that you'll need to excel at the GMAT Focus Edition Data Insights section.